Hi, welcome Prescott Valley to tonight's uh, Parks and Rec Commission meeting uh, for March 9th, 2021. Um, we have uh, a quorum tonight, so it's good to see everybody again. Bobby, you're up for roll call. Yes, sir. Uh, Commissioner Gorman? Here. Thank you. Commissioner Moss? Here. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Byram? Present. Vice Chair Pierce? I'm here. Thank you. And Chairperson Policon? Here. Thank you. Right. We have a quorum. Awesome. Easy when he's looking right at us. Yeah. <laughs> Good eye contact. You know who to talk to. Um, next, we'll go to uh, item number three, the approval of the agenda. Do we have a uh, motion to approve the agenda for tonight's meeting? I move that we approve tonight's agenda. All right. Do I have a second? Second. Here in a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Hearing none opposed, we'll move on to item number four, the approval of the minutes for February 9th, uh, the regular scheduled meeting that we attended on February 9th. Do I have a motion? I move to approve the minutes. All I right. second it. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Hearing none opposed, we'll move on from that. Um, we have some scheduled announcements, um, introduction from the staff. Uh, we have Jordan Sanchez, um, athletic coordinator. Commission, just wanted to uh, introduce Jordan Sanchez. He is our new athletics coordinator, just like you said, sir. Uh, been on board for coming up on your third week now, so I will uh, actually turn it over to him if you want to give him a little bit about you, Jordan. Sure. Good evening, Park Rec Commission. Um, thank you for uh, thank you for having me this evening. Um, like uh, like Robert said, I just uh, I just started. This is uh, the beginning of my third week. Moved here from California. Um, Southern California specifically over there worked uh, various cities um, kind of in progressive progressively responsible parks and rec positions worked a lot of different program areas um, saw the position in town here uh, did a little research on on the town and surrounding areas and you know I thought it would be a good fit um, was lucky enough to be offered the position and um, I'm very grateful for it and so far um, I'm loving it a lot so Thank you for having me this evening, and um, yeah. Very cool. What part of California are you from? Um, last place I was living was Covina, so like San Gabriel Valley. Yeah. Um, I lived like in a few different neighborhoods around there. All right, so welcome to a beautiful part of the country. You'll enjoy this a lot more than Southern California, I hope. I, I already am. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. We'll be your welcoming committee, hopefully. That's good. Yeah, um, I think you have some unique opportunities ahead of you for the athletic coordinator. I mean, there's always opportunities and growth, and you probably come from a larger um, area, but we have a lot of involvement with our community as well. So we'll look forward to that new, fresh ideas. That's cool. Any questions or concerns for uh, Mr. Sanchez? Uh, just what made you pick Prescott Valley or Arizona in general, maybe? Yeah, um, I, I had spent most of my professional life uh, w working in the Southern California area, so like LA County. Um, I was looking for something a little different, and so I kind of like broadened my my uh, net to where I was looking, and just the uh, the community here really interested me. I'm I'm into the little bit slower pace, a lot of great like outdoor opportunities, um, and the position specifically at. Athletics uh, facilities. It's it's a it's an area that I have a lot of background in, um, so it's something that I just wanted to to, to jump on. Yeah, cool. Yeah. We look forward to hearing from you in the future. Hopefully, you uh, get some good growth and good potentials within the organization. So that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. I'm looking forward to it as well. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. All right. Next, we have item five B: programs, classes, and special events. Yes, sir. So just got to say it has been a great addition to the team just having Jordan on board uh, for coming up on his third week. Uh, he went ahead and took over volleyball the end of our winter season, did a great job, took care of the tournament. So we're very happy to have him on board here. Uh, moving on to classes and participation, uh, something I've been enjoying doing, uh, getting the breakdowns from Bryce on total number of students over the course of February, uh, 519 students uh, with our demographics breakdown. Um, the 60 plus crowd, we usually get great students just like usual, uh, 18 to 59, we got 92, 12 to 17, 40, 6 to 11 having 72 students in there. I love seeing that demographic as well and 0 to 5, 16, so those are our uh, new patrons and participants that are just working their way up. Uh, 
from our programs for the month, uh, we had a total of 11, uh, eight instructors, and uh, the total number of classes offered, 199. Um, like we were talking about last month, that's a huge amount of classes to be able to offer to your community. So Bryce has a really done a great job with what she's doing with the community and outdoor education uh, position. <clears throat> Uh, moving on to uh, the aquatics hiring, the pool is obviously going to be opening up here for the summer, coming up pretty quick. Uh, we have lifeguard and swim instructor positions available, uh, concessions and office staff, lead lifeguards, office manager, and the lifeguard manager position is available. Uh, Applications are open currently online, and we will be having open interviews Friday, March 19th from 3 to 5 p.m., and Saturday, March 20th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the actual facility, Mountain Valley Splash, right there in Mountain Valley Park. So anybody that's listening, looking for a job, anybody that you know, that's uh, it's a really fun summer job. That's something I did for six years, and then running the pool for another six. It's, it's a great way to meet people, make an impact on your community, Community and get a little bit of that at work experience with uh, some responsibility over the summer. Cool. And the what it entails for the open interview, obviously, you have that application portion. What entails for them to jump in the open interview for that? Yes, sir. Uh, so as long as they show up uh, between those hours on either Friday or Saturday, um, it will be a first come, first serve. Uh, we'll always make sure we get everybody in there for an interview that wants to interview, and uh, they'll they'll just need to wait around um, at the pool facility if we do have a long line. But we'll get everybody through as quickly as we can. Cool. Good to hear. Um, and pvaz.net would be the best website for them to uh, jump online and do the application portion? That is correct, sir. Um, all of our applications will be available to them right there. Just uh, make sure you're looking at what the heading is for the position you're trying to apply for, and uh, we'll, we'll absolutely make sure we get interviews out to the right people. Very good. Any questions about the upcoming pool season for the hiring? No? Awesome. Perfect. Move on to, uh, I guess we have new subjects, or you were scrolling down here. Sorry, Bobby. Sorry. No, my fault. I was just trying to get to the next slide. There we go. So uh, extravaganza, that's absolutely coming up this month. Just wanted to make sure we touched on that one again. Uh, even though it will be a drive through experience, uh, the staff have really been working on some really cool things. We have crafting Fridays to make sure that we have a, a lot of a different elements out there for the uh, for the community to take part in um, on the 27th. That'll take place at Fane Park from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. We'll have live performances from Diplomas Martial Arts and Lessons by Lexi, Lexi Dance Studio. Uh, you'll be able to tune in your radio to KPPV 106.7 for a kid-friendly uh, music as you hunt for eggs just from your vehicle and things like that. And the kids will enjoy uh, Easter gift basket at the end of the experience. So we're hoping everybody will come out and take part in that event. Very good. I think it should be a good event for the community, drive through, say social distancing, the whole nine yards. Absolutely. Um, so it's a good time of year to get out and about and kind of experience the park and see what Fane Park has to offer as well. So Yes, sir. Are you guys uh, closing off Fane Park as an overall um, occupancy for that day, just, just for drive through purposes only, correct? Yes, sir, we will. So the park will be closed down to uh, normal patrons of Fane Park until 12 p.m. when we get the event over with, start cleaning up. So uh, the only access people will have is actually driving through the experience, heading out on 4th Street, and then after 12 p.m. hits, we'll be opening the park back up for normal operations. Now, just thinking out loud, I didn't think about this before, but is that something that uh, you might regulate at the entrance of the park, or is that something you guys are just going to allow to kind of naturally occur? Yes, sir. So we'll uh, we'll actually be closing the park off the night before. We'll be closing the gate there, posting it. So then, if anybody who comes up, you know, at 4 p.m., they see the parks closed. If they come up before we get there, then signage will be up there as well. And then we'll also have sandwich boards and things like that out a little further uh, out on Fifth Street. So then we make sure people know that an event is going on and the park is closed for that duration. Good, good to know. I know it's very busy. Uh, it is. That's, that's very time heavily of year for Saturday morning. But yeah, <laughs> as long as it's informed, as long as people know about it, I think there's not much to be said and set up in processes for you guys too. So yes, sir. Again, 
Any questions for the extravaganza? Yeah, I'm curious, how many drive throughs do we do a year through Vein? So we only actually do one per year. This would be the second one, uh, with Valley of Lights being one of them that we do in the winter. This is something else that people should be able to experience what Vane is when it's not winter time, see a little bit more of the foliage. And then with the other aspects uh, that we're putting in there, um, this would be only be a second one that we would do within this year. Would, uh, would, you be, would it be possible to perhaps, because the drive through element, it seems like it's easy-ish to set up, you mm -hmm. know, because they're not out and about like a carnival walking yeah. around, but they just kind of do a loop and then that's that's it. Mm -hmm. I'm just think, curious about maybe doing a few drive throughs during the year when it's nice out through Fane. Something, you know, something like that. You know, that could entertain kids and just yeah. something to look forward to. Something that we order kind of thing. Like what you're talking about with the drive through, what what we're hoping to get to um, this upcoming summer, specifically with Fane, like you're you're talking about there. Um, the hiking type of clubs and some of those things to actually get the kids out of the car. Um, we're always planning for the worst, but hoping for the best. So with things getting progressively better, we are working on those types of things as well, sir. And this is March 27th, right? It's in a couple yes, Saturdays from now. March 27th, coming up quick. Yeah. Awesome. And then uh, another event that I wanted to make sure that was on people's radar and let the commissioners know that we're working on, uh, Arbor Day celebration, which that'll be happening April 30th. So we do have a little bit of time for this one. We're also gonna be virtual for our Arbor Day celebration this year. Um, with that, we'll be going live from Mountain Valley Park. We're gonna be planting right around 13 trees. Uh, Marnie, the director of the Chamber of Commerce for the uh, town of Prescott Valley, um, will be doing doing a story read along live on Facebook. So then people are still able to participate in the event, but uh, hopefully next year, I've always really loved this one, the planting of the trees, kids getting to put dirt into the different holes for the new trees that we're, we're planting and then taking saplings home. It's always a really great event. So even though we're only able to do it virtually this year, we're still gonna make it another stellar event for our community. Good. Yeah, that should be a, a unique opportunity for some community involvement and honestly it's limitless anybody can join on that facebook live event and it doesn't have to be you know travel restrictions or abilities to get out so that's really that's really nice to see cool any questions or concerns for the arbor day event good awesome. i'm looking forward to next year also <laughs> yes ma'am <laughs> yeah, are we all awesome um we'll move on to oh you got more go ahead nope just moving on in the next slide sir okay so we'll we'll uh talk about our uh but it's item 6A, rather, the chairperson report. Um, not much to address, I guess, this go-around. I'm just looking at this, the pictures of the kiddo with baseball season coming around. <laughs> and little dude in the audience. But uh, one of the biggest things we can do is just try to be involved with our community as much as we can. Um, take that opportunity to, to share that little bit of enjoyment that, these, that we kind of all strive for. Um, I have a wonderful opportunity to coach in Little League this year, so that's always fun. But, you know, any participation that you can have, um, any participation that you can do for our community, whether it's small or little or big, um, try to take those advantages. So I think that's cool. Yes. Anyways, um, not much else other than that. Item 6B, the Tree Advisory Board. So for the Tree Advisory Board, I just wanted to make sure I reported. We did hear back. We got not only the Tree City USA designation, but also the Growth Award again this year. Um, we haven't got the actual physical awards yet, but we were notified that we did get them. Um, that, that says a lot about what we do over the course of a year, even with the pandemic, making sure that we are being the arborists that we need to be to take care of the trees that we have in the urban areas, um, but then also making sure that we're getting the educational components out with Arbor Day. As you can see, we did utilize one of the pictures of the kiddos putting some dirt in there with uh, one of the trees that we were planting at one of our Arbor Day celebrations. Um, doing the educational components of that is is huge you know trying to instill that and just like you said uh chairperson um getting the kids out and just enjoying something around here it's it's a great community and being able to have these type of awards is uh is very special to us yeah, very much so we can't take for granted when we have people moving from a from southern california to come oh, yeah. here when they're looking for better opportunities so finding for looking for a good spot we're it yeah for sure um, any questions on the Tree City USA? I know we had some interest in regards to some board. We'll, I think we can talk about that a little more in the near future. If you have any questions, I guess we can address it. No questions, but I'm ready when you're ready. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, cool. Zach. Um, our next item we'll look at, it will be uh, 7A, the old business for the MVP restroom update. 
Perfect. So uh, like we had talked about coming back from uh, the holidays and getting back into our meetings, we had this project rolling pretty quickly. Bids have already come back. Uh, our, we got six total bids um, on this project, and our low bidder is actually being taken to council for approval this coming Thursday. Um, as long as that contract is approved, then we're gonna be moving forward with the project and hopefully breaking ground within this month. Um, but I will have more to report on once we get to our April meeting. Awesome, still same location? Yes, right sir. Next to the AstroTurf, or the, I guess the soccer field, if yes, you would. Sir. Great uh, location, great spot, I think, for an updated restroom. Any conceptual changes or anything, or just kind of along the same? Uh, nothing conceptually. Everything's going to be staying the same. Um, we're going to be almost tripling capacity from what we had previously, and doing an updated building that's you know more inviting, more modern, uh, better for our community, better for our citizens, and obviously much better for the amount of tournaments that we'll be having coming up over the course of the year. So this is what it's going to look like? That is correct, yes, ma'am. So that would be the front of the building right there from the conceptual. And um, from that, it, it should look the same once we get it built. Okay. Looks For a bathroom, it looks pretty good. Quite nice, <laughs> right? It, it's going to be very nice. <laughs> very good. Uh, any other questions for the MVP restroom update? We covered it kind of last time, but I think it's one of those neat things to see in a large park, a lot of exposure. Um, and that park definitely needs a... A yeah. little, little update for that building, and it looks like it matches every infrastructure we have there or nearby yeah. there. So, absolutely, especially with the Boys and Girls Club being nearby. So, perfect. Um, we'll move on to item 8A the new business, um, Santa Fe Park upgrades. Perfect. So uh, with the trailhead of the Iron King Trail being moved with the new construction with Granville uh, phases coming in, uh, we did have some uh, extra rail equipment like we have every mile mapped out. A mile marker is one of the rail sections, um, but we were, we were in need of moving. Uh, one portion of it that was there. Uh, we had decided to move it over to Santa Fe Station Park. Uh, we put it over on the south edge of the perimeter of what we have currently at Santa Fe Station. Uh, our parks guys did a great job moving it. Uh, we decided to fence it off instead of leaving it open air now, but I, I think they did a, an awesome job, and it really does kind of make a, a nice addition to that park, so I wanted you guys to be able to see that, know where it was at, and uh, be able to inform the community that had been moved um, and with that we also had jumped into our phase two portion of planning uh, as you can see over there on the right hand side of uh, the slide the orange outlined area is a portion of sidewalk we had about 19,000 left in diff funding that we were able to utilize for this park for the landscaping and and some of the other incidentals that you got to make sure you get done when you build a new park um, with our spouse connector actually coming in and starting up right around April as well we wanted to make sure we got that concrete in there so we have the connectivity through spouse and Glassford and that'll all be ADA we'll have a ramp right down there at the bottom of it and then once we get into the next year we're going to continue our plan planning to get the uh, sidewalk to connect all the way over to Santa Fe Loop. That's perfect. I think that park is in need of another access point, one yes. of those high scene areas, but easy to access, not <laughs> so much. But now with the spouse addition, I think that'll be perfect. Um, it's, it's a fun park, interesting to be at, always a... Uh, Always busy when it comes to pickleball. Yes, it is. Um, You've been out there in the mornings. See how, how much brought, usage. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. As the sun that. hits the, the, the concrete, it's, it's busy. Yeah, it's kind of it insane. Um, any questions? Well, when COVID hit this time last year, we had planned to have a grand opening. Yeah. And of course, that's been put off. And uh, with other, uh, not maybe grand openings, but other. Uh, occasions that we were going to all come together as a community and neighborhood mm -hmm. and we're we're not doing that so my question is what is our policy when we can start mm -hmm. doing that I we're, have a policy. We are working on another couple of projects that we're hoping to have done by April. With those, I am planning on ribbon cuttings for them. I haven't been uh, straight away from doing that just yet, and it's looking like with the with the new vaccine coming out and things getting better, we're able to plan 
for a more normal type of ribbon cutting or event or or things like that. So that that is something that is so, back in the so cards. So do we have a timeline at all or a thought of a timeline? For like uh, normal operations? Start when we're going to start venturing out into the neighborhood or the neighborhood we're going to let them come together yeah. at one of these places. Do you... Are we? Are you thinking of uh, uh, next year, maybe the end of this year? So still taking it month by month with, with our planning and things of that nature. Obviously, we want to take into account everybody's um, thought process, ideologies, how everybody feels about things That's as well. That's a very touchy so. subject, and it's yeah, hard absolutely. because I think people are so desperately wanting mm -hmm. to come together as a community again, yeah. instead of, you know, all of yeah. this. I mean, distance is great, but, yes. um, or our community and our souls, we need the contact. Mm -hmm. I'll agree with you. If it's at a distance. Absolutely. You know, to, to come together again. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. So and I'm, yes. I'm anxious, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I've had both my shots. I'm good. Good. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm happy, yeah. but I, I understand that uh, a lot of people haven't yet, and yeah. it may take uh, quite a few more months. So I was just wondering. Yeah, and we are we are going forward planning it like that, trying to make sure that we'll we'll keep the distance in there. If you want to wear a mask, you are absolutely more than welcome to do so. Uh, but we do want to celebrate these things that the town is able to bring into the community. So doing these ribbon cuttings, making these things happen, we're, we're always making sure we plan for that, ma'am. Okay. Any other questions about the Santa Fe upgrades? Very cool. I know we took a trip out there for our uh, little field trip, and just cool to see the overall environment of that area. Yeah. Um, the structures that were put in place, they look high quality, yeah. long lasting, um, overall just a well well sought facility. So very good Absolutely. job. All right, um, I think we're all done with the items new. Um, let's move on to item number nine, the department director's report. Yes, sir. Ms. Casey Van Heron, our department director, wanted to come up and be able to address the commissioners, make sure that she's involved as well. So I'll turn it over to her. Hi, Casey. Nice to see you again. Good evening, commissioners. It's good to be here. Um, so some of the things that I just I just wanted to point out is uh, we've been a department now for just over six months. Um, so this librarian who, as I didn't know very much about Parks and Recreation, the crossovers between the library and Parks and Re Recreation are huge. I mean, we're all about community. Um, and I was, I was reading an article in our Parks and Recreation magazine that we get from National Parks and Recreation Association. And what is what is what is interesting is how how this article paralleled libraries, um, and I'll I'll read that to you. So parks and recreation professionals have a positive, lasting imp impact on millions of people every day through their tireless efforts to deliver programming and amenities that advance mental and physical health and support equity and inclusion. Equity inclusion just hit me hard because that's what libraries are all about. We're about inclusivity and equal access to everything, no matter uh, your race, religion, political affiliation, it doesn't matter. Oops. Libraries um, and parks and recreation, it doesn't matter. We want that, that inclusivity in our, in our community. And, uh, and that just gave me goosebumps, you know, because that's so important to me and it made me feel like I am what I'm doing in the library has carried over into Parks and Recreation. And uh, one of the things that I just wanted to update you with was, I think, was it back in October? Uh, Nick took me on a parks tour. Yes, ma'am. And I fainted, but <laughs> that's okay. But what was interesting about going to all the different parks, there were so many, mm -hmm. and, and it took us like Amazing. four hours, and I didn't get to two of them because I had to leave. I said, I think I'm hungry, I just need to eat. But. So what I've been doing is every Friday, I go out to a couple parks every day and I walk around. And so Fridays is like my parks tour day and I really look forward to that day where I can, I look around, I see the parks, I, I play on the swing sets, I go down the slides. Um, I, I look around so when people in the community say, hey, this bench, there's something wrong with this bench, I go out and I look at it and I see how it's repaired and I get familiar with everything because that's that's important to me. It's an, it's an, it's a, um, an extension of what we do here. That's where our community hangs out. So um, 
I really, really enjoy that. I look forward to Fridays, except this Friday I won't be here, but that's okay. Um, but I want you guys to know that I am active in, in not only Parks and Rec, and yeah, libraries are always going to be you know, part of me, but we have that parallel and how we can all work together, libraries and Parks and Recreation for our community. So I just wanted to share that with you. I'd say to really merge it together, you bring a book next Friday with you. Right now. <laughs> well, I've always loved the library. It saved me uh, in COVID, uh, absolutely. Uh -huh. And so, and I always think of it together, and I, maybe it's because Parks and Rec is just next door. Right. But nevertheless, I always think of the two mm -hmm. as being very cohesive. Right. So. And that's what I always thought too. I mean, parks, parks and recreation. You know, even though there is that that pay point for some activities, hanging out in the park is free. Hanging out in the library is free, and especially for our community and our children, they need that space. So, well, it's a part of the community. The library, absolutely and parks and rec. And, yeah, and all, and all. You know, it's just a good thing. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you, got, you got an applause. That's the first ever applause we ever got from uh, the Parks and Rec Commission, by the way. There you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Move on to item number 10. We have any unscheduled public appearances? Um, we have one visitor, but uh, I think he's going to remain. <laughs> Seated. Otherwise, he's got a lot to say. Um, <laughs> we'll move on to item number 11. Um, the next meeting, regular scheduled for April 13th. Um, same time, same bat channel, if you would. Um, hopefully, everybody has a chance to get here. Do you have a item number 12? Do I have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? I'll second. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Hearing none opposed, we'll move on to our next scheduled meeting. Thank you, Prescott Valley, and have a great night. <laughs>